Hello. Uh, in this video, uh, we want to go over uh, some property of functions uh, called injections, uh, surjections, and bijections. Um, it's really important foundational stuff that um, we we'll woke up to a really cool fact in the uh, next week's videos. So um, let's jump right to it. Okay, uh, so injections, surjections, and bijections. So uh, let's start with their definitions. A function f uh, is an injection, or um, if you wanna say it as an adjective of a function, it's an injective function. Uh, another uh, words that's used that means the same thing is one-to-one -one function uh, or into function. If you say any of these things, uh, it means the same thing. It basically means uh, as long as you take two elements in the domain that are distinct, um, then the output will also be distinct. So that's that's the idea of injection, is that uh, if if the inputs are different, then the outputs are also different. Uh, surjection. Uh, means uh, everything in the range um, is hit by something in the domain. So for all B in the range uh, or, the, or the target, um, there's at least uh, one element in the domain such that it hits that. So that's the idea of surjections, the range is covered. We say a function is a bijection uh, if it does both of those things. Um, so we use the word bijective for um, adjective version of uh, that word. And one-to-one uh, -one correspondence uh, is also, uh, it means the same thing, bijection. So notice one-to-one -one means injection. And then if you also add the word correspondence, uh, it becomes a bijection. So it's also, uh, sorry, I haven't said the uh, definition for bijection here. Um, I'll fix that in the notes. It's called bijection if it's both injective and surjective at the same time. Okay. Um, so as an example, uh, so this is one way of looking at it. So previous theorem, we talked about natural numbers and being able to represent it in a QRE representation. Um, that is a bijection between the natural numbers and those coefficients we write down um, in a sequence. Uh, in fact, it's a, it's a finite sequence because it's not an infinite sequence. And also we have another restriction that the first element is not zero. So any finite sequence where the first element is not zero corresponds to a natural number and vice versa. If you pick a natural number that gives you a unique uh, finite sequence, we proved that last time. Okay, uh, other examples. So uh, if we're looking at a function uh, f of x equals x squared, uh, so this guy is not injective because um, there are two different inputs that result in the same output. For example, uh, negative one squared is equal to one and one squared is equal to one. So I was able to find two distinct inputs that has the same output. So that fails the definition for inje injective function, right? If it's a different input, it has to be a different output, which is not the case here. So this is uh, not an injective function, uh, but you could actually make this into an uh, injective function just by changing the domain itself. So if you say f is a function from zero to infinity, map to real numbers, so if you only allow non-negative numbers, uh, now it becomes injective. So the only way x squared fails to be injective is plus or minus the same number, squared is 
uh, is going to be the same output. But um, just by changing the domain, you can make it into an injective function. So that means that um, when you're talking about a function, the domain and range does matter um, whether or not it's injective or surjective. Um, another example that we've actually covered already uh, is the function g from uh, two variables to two output variables um, by two linear functions. So ax plus by is the first output, and the second coordinate of the output is going to be cx plus dy. Now, you might remember uh, from beginning of chapter two that if you have, let's see, ax plus by equals to r, and cx plus dy equals to s. Uh, if you had these two equations, there's, uh, you could solve for x and y um, as long as ad minus bc is not equal to zero. So this is, um, so this is saying that every, every number rs is hit by some x and y, so it's, it shows that it's, uh, surjection um, and the fact that you can find the inverse itself is actually shows that it's injective as well um, but uh, that that relies on this this condition right here okay. uh, another example of functions that we could look at so uh, the tangent function between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 so uh, in this domain, um, it's an injection. So different input uh, gives you a different output. Uh, it's also a surjection. Like every real number uh, is hit by this, um, this, this graph. So what I mean by that is if I pick any y and draw a horizontal line, that shows that some input is gonna give you that output. That shows that it's surjective. So this function right here is a bijection. It's injective and surjective. Um, if I increase the domain, so usually uh, tangent function looks like this. If you allow for other angles, uh, it's not um, pi shifted from pi over two. But this is no longer uh, injective because uh, two different inputs will give you the same output. Um, but as long as you stay in this short interval from negative pi over two to pi over two, you, it would be both injective and surjective. Um, arctan function, so that's the inverse function to the function above. Uh, arctan is also injective, right? It's stri strictly increasing, so um, different input gives you a different output, um, but it's not surjective. So this, this one, the range is the whole real numbers, and this thing is bounded from negative pi over two, uh, sorry, negative pi over two to positive pi over two. Um, so it's not hitting y values over here. So this would be uh, injection, but not a surjection. Um, here's another example. So h is a function that's uh, defined by 3x, uh, but th this guy is not, so this guy is injective. So if I try to draw the graph here, okay. Uh, so the input and output is both natural numbers. Um, so different input d definitely gives you a different output. Uh, so this guy is an injective function, but it's not a surjection because uh, some outputs like two is never hit um, when you plug in three times some number. It never equals two uh, when, the, when the input is natural numbers. So this guy is, uh, injective but not surjective. Um, if you have the same function or same formula for the function, but if you consider it a function between 
real numbers to real numbers. Uh, this is a bijective function. So the graph of this guy looks like a line with slope three. Uh, this guy uh, is injective, different inputs give you a different output, and also every output is hit. Um, so um, this would be bijective. So notice how uh, the looking at the domain and the range uh, change whether or not this guy is um, surjection or not. So it's, it's important to include domain and range as part of the, uh, the definition of the function. Okay. Um, so here's the definition. So if F is a bijection from uh, set A to set B, uh, then inverse uh, of the function F is a different function G going from the range of the original function to the domain of the original function, such that uh, for any B uh, in the, the range of the original function, G of B is the unique element in the domain such that F of A is equal to B. And we write uh, F inverse, uh, usually for the shorthand of the inverse of the function F. Um, okay, so this definition should be looked at a little bit carefully. Um, so um, we use the fact that F is a bijection inside of the definition. So um, for each B in B, G of B is the unique element in A such that F, is, F of A is equal to B. So first of all, if, if this guy was not surjection, then you might not, such A might not exist. Remember uh, the definition for surjection is that for any B, there exists an A such that F of A equals to B. So if it doesn't exist, this definition doesn't make sense. So you have to be surjection uh, for this to make sense. And also you have to be uh, injective as well, because if it's, if it's not injective, there might've been two different A such that it maps to the same B, um, in which case uh, this is not well-defined. It's, it's not um, ambiguous, sorry. It's not uh, well-defined in the sense that two people coming up with the inverse might come out with two different functions uh, because it's not specified which A came from. Um, but if it's injective, there's really only one element that maps to it. So that's where the uniqueness comes in and uh, this becomes a well-defined function. Um, so both injection and surjection is necessary for function to have an inverse. Okay, so that's the first point. Um, and this might be obvious, but I, it's worth stating. Um, so if F is bijective, uh, then the inverse will be bijective as well. And inverse has an inverse. And inverse of the inverse function is the original function f. So f inverse inverse is f. Okay. Um, so that, that takes a little bit of uh, unwinding. Um, but if uh, f inverse is a surjection because the original function f was well defined for everything in the domain, um, and uh, it's, it must be injection. Um, because uh, in the definition, because uh, the original function is injective. Okay. Um, okay, so let's, let's try to practice these uh, definitions that we've covered so far uh, by proving a proposition. Okay. So let's say f is an increasing function. Um, then I want to show that f is an injective function. Okay, so if I have a statement like this that I want to prove, um, the first thing I want to do is 
uh, lay out the definition for the terms that's used. So in this um, proposition, I, I need two definitions. I need the definition for F to be increasing. And I also need uh, the definition for F to be injective. So what I wanna do is that increasing function F implies it's injective. Now I know a lot of people have uh, pretty good understanding of what increasing function looks like in their head, um, but it's not as obvious as you might think where to start. Um, because if I ask this question to uh, students in maybe my Calc 1 class, for example, uh, what's an increasing function? Uh, they might respond, oh, functions with positive derivative. Um, that's that's uh, one of the things that they're learning, so they're, they probably think about it in terms of the derivative. Um, but that is not the definition that, that we started with. Um, in fact, if, if the function has a positive derivative, um, then it's an increasing function, at least for that, uh, where the interval where the derivative is positive, but actually uh, you could have a function that's, that doesn't have a derivative that's also increasing. So um, that definition is not good enough um, for, for this proposition. So what do we do? Uh, we look in the textbook, right? Um, go to the back uh, and look up on the, on the index uh, I look under increasing. So I go to increasing, increasing function, uh, and the italics number tells you where it's defined. So that's page 13. Um, and I could, I could write down before I get started. Um, and I could do the same thing about injective functions. So when I wanna prove things about a function, that's the first step is, is to look up what the definition that we're working with. Okay, so I've, I've rewritten the, the definition that's useful for us uh, for this proposition. So definition of function uh, from A to real numbers. So for function to be increasing, it has to be a uh, function to the real numbers uh, and it's increasing if uh, x less than y implies the output f of x is less than f of y. So that's what it means to be increasing. And um, the injection that was earlier uh, on this notes, uh, function f is injective for all x and y, um, as long as x not equal to y implies f of x is not equal to f of y. So now that I've kind of compared these definitions, uh, you might see what the strategy might be. So this, these two definitions are very similar looking. Um, if I replace the less than symbol with not equal to symbol, I pretty much what, have what I have. So um, that's our strategy there. <clears throat> so let's write down the proof. So let f be an increasing function. And I wanna show that this guy is injective function. So what do I do? So I, I'm gonna pick any X and Y such that X is not equal to Y. So I'm gonna start with this part of the injective definition. And I wanna show that uh, this implies the outputs are also different. Okay. All right, so I started with X and Y. And uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is that if, if, it's, if they're not equal to each other, one of them is gonna be smaller than the other. So X could be less than Y or X could be greater than Y, uh, but without loss of generality, uh, I could just pick one side, right? Uh, if, if X was greater than Y, I could just swap the labels of X and Y. Um, and then the next step is that the because F is increasing, um, if X is less than Y, that shows that the outputs are uh, less than each other. Okay. And if X is less than F of Y, then in particular, they're not equal to each other, right? Uh, this is by trichotomy. Uh, numbers could be either less than, uh, equal to, or greater than. So if it's 
less than, then they, they, they can't be equal to each other. Um, but that shows that they're injective because we started with x not equal to y and we ended with, with the output f of x is not equal to f of y. Therefore, f is an injective function. I hope that made sense. Um, okay. So uh, what I want you to try next uh, is uh, prove this next proposition. So it's, it's another definition checking type of uh, uh, theorem. So if you have a function that, that is bounded function, then it is not a surjective function. So uh, what do you need to prove this proposition? So you need two things. You need definition of the bounded function. So uh, please go look that up. Um, and you also need the definition for surjection. Um, in fact, I wanna say it's not surjective. So I need a negation of the definition of the surjection. So uh, you practice in chapter two, um, how to look at the negation of quantifiers. So surjection uh, re requires a universal quantifier. So when you look at the negation, you swap that into existential uh, quantifier and um, uh, that's, that's where your proof is gonna go. Uh, I am not gonna prove this proposition in this video. I want you to try it on your own, okay? Um, I think I'm gonna end the video here. Uh, I will see you in the next video.